Please help me in welcoming Representative Pittman. How you doing? Great to see such a crowd out here today. It's great to see that you're braving the cold, and most of all, it's great to see that you didn't leave when you found out I was coming. <laughs> I'll tell you just right off the bat where I stand on gun rights and Second Amendment. First of all, Second Amendment does not give you the right to keep and bear arms. It only acknowledges that God gave you that right. Amen. And commits the government to upholding that right. And as far as I'm concerned, if you have no intention of harming an innocent person, it's nobody's business, especially the government's. What guns you have, or how many, or when, where, and how you carry them. Now, I'm glad that at least we do have uh, the concealed carry permit law in North Carolina, but I don't think we really should need it. Amen. As long as we have it, that's good. Let's, let's follow it properly. But, uh, you know, the government is supposed to be limited by your rights. The government doesn't tell you what you can do. We tell the government what it can do. And the state of North Carolina, as well as all the other states, need to reassert our rights as states. We are not a franchise of the federal government. The states created the federal government, and it should be our servant, not our master. I've been working on a proposed amendment to the state constitution. I'm being told this can't be done. I may have to reword it some. But I just want to read it to you. What I, It's not uh, been sent to bill drafting, not a formal bill yet, but just my idea here. And, and let me read this to you and see what you think of it, whether I'm going too far, whether I'm crazy, whatever. I would amend the Constitution of the State of North Carolina, Article 1, Section 30, by deleting these words. It says, Nothing herein shall justify the practice of carrying concealed weapons or prevent the General Assembly from enacting penal statutes against that practice. And I want to take those words out and replace it with the following words, or something to this effect. The carrying of concealed weapons shall not be prohibited by the state of North Carolina, except in courthouses and federal government buildings where the federal government prohibits weapons, in privately owned buildings where the owner has posted prominently displayed signs forbidding concealed weapons on their premises, or on school campuses by persons not authorized to carry concealed weapons on school campuses. Now, the reason I have those exceptions in there is I don't think it has a ghost of a chance if I don't put that in there. It's not because I want it there. The carrying of concealed weapons, including pistols and otherwise legal knives, except as stated above, shall not be a punishable offense unless said weapon is used in the actual commission of a crime. Furthermore, in accordance with the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution, any attempt to disarm the law-abiding citizens of the state of North Carolina shall be resisted by the full power of the state of North Carolina. Yeah. And citizens who have committed no crime have the right personally to resist confiscation of their weapons. Yeah. Everybody's telling me I can't even get it on the floor worded that way. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> well, I'm going to work on it. We'll see what we can do, but I need your support. If I, you know, one of the things I keep getting told is even if you get an amendment, you know, on the floor, even if you get it passed, it's going to take a lot of money and a lot of work to get an amendment passed by the people. What do you think about that? Do you think we can get that done? Yeah. Well, we're going to give it a try. But you notice in here I said something about on school campuses by persons not authorized to carry concealed weapons on school campuses. The point of that for me is uh, I'm thinking about some companion legislation to the effect that um, certain persons, teachers, other workers at the school, if they you know check out 
uh, can be authorized to carry on campus. Yeah. Yeah. We were all touched and deeply shaken by the uh, shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary. And one of the things that I've thought ever since I first heard about it was if that brave principal who gave her life to try to stop what was going on and had a gun and taken good aim, she could have taken him out without giving up her life. Yeah. Something else I would like to do, as long as we have the concealed carry permit program, I'd like to work out, you know, I have to have a bill for this too, but I'd like to have a program where people who have concealed carry, not everybody, but certain ones who are willing to go through extra training uh, would be uh, put into a system to be, I guess you'd call it constables, where, for instance, if you qualified for that, not that it would be a paid position, the state's in financial trouble enough as it is, but if you qualify for that program and you have that permit, that uh, constable permit, you go into the bank, you don't have to leave your gun in the car. Good. Something starts, you can stop it without having to wait for the police. I think we need something like that, where we have people who are understood to be authorized to do that. Because the police are great. I love them. I got nothing against them. They do a good job when they can, but they can't always be there. Armed citizens need to protect armed citizens. Now, I've heard some talk about uh, why do these people need these assault weapons? Nobody hunts a deer with an AR-15. Well, I know some people who do. <laughs> that's right. See, that's the thing. It's just a semi-automatic weapon, just like a lot of others. It just don't look like that. It functions the same way. But it's not about that anyway. I hunt, and I think you know our hunting rights are very important. And uh, I want to be able to defend my family in case somebody breaks in, that sort of thing. But that's not what the Second Amendment is about. And there are some people who are afraid to speak up and say what it's about. Cause they, they don't want to get in trouble. They, they don't want uh, to offend anybody. Well, I'm going to tell you what it's about. April 18, 1775, a group of Americans refused to have their guns confiscated by the British because they had those guns. Yeah, they did hunting and other things with it, but the reason they needed those guns was to defend themselves against an oppressive government. Amen. That's what the Second Amendment is about. See, most of those men who signed the Declaration of Independence and helped put the Constitution together were Calvinists. And as Calvinists, they understood human nature. They knew that no matter how wonderful a Constitution they gave us, no matter how good a form of government they put together for us, you can't always count on people to do the right thing and that someday individuals might get in power in the government who wouldn't care about the people's rights and wouldn't care about the Constitution, and they might decide to impose tyranny on the people, and the people needed to have the ability to fight back. That's what the right to those guns is about. And, you know, just putting it very simply, I, you know, I hope and pray that never happens, that we never actually have to fight the government for our freedom. But if we do, you know, if they're going to be coming at us with fully automatic weapons, we'll at least be able to have semi-automatic weapons to respond. At the very least. Again, I emphasize, I hope and I pray to God that it never comes to that. But I want you to stay free. And so I want you to have the ability to deter those who would impose tyranny on you. That's what the Second Amendment's about, and that's what we need to stand Amen. for. God bless you.